ego. And ego is called um, am, amkara in Sanskrit. And it's very interesting what the translation of amkara means. It means the false one who's pretending to be you. I mean, what a definition. The false one who is pretending to be you. Why do we say that? Well, let's first talk about your two layers. You have a soul, you have an ego. Your soul is your courage, it's the essence of who you are. Your soul is your intuition. Your soul is your life purpose. Your soul is any loving inclination that you have. Your soul is the feeling of we are one. Ego is me versus you, the sense of isolation, sense of loneliness. Ego is not in touch at all with any of the unseen forces of life. So, charisma, intuition, faith, courage, these are not objects. Charisma is not an object, like a, a flower. Okay. Love, you can't pick love like that. It's, it's, it's an intangible force. So, um, ego represents lack of courage, insecurity, inner flaw, pride, uh, fickleness, instead of stability. And all that. At any given moment, you have a choice between soul and ego. How do you access soul? I mentioned it in yesterday's talk. Every time you come to the bridge of the nose and notice that breath comes in, breath goes out, you immediately land with the soul. Anytime you stop becoming mindful of your breath, you land uh, in the subconscious mind where a robot starts to take over with previous conditioning. By conditioning, I mean all of your past habits, any addictions, any obsessions, any way that you grew up in your original household, which is now ingrained in your mind, all of that belongs to you. Therefore, these two are so closely linked, and so close to each other, that you really have to be a master to separate them. But after a while, you'll know very well whether you're being egotistical or not. If you're scared, if you're insecure, if you're moody, if your mind is chattering, if you're feeling isolated from the rest of society, you know that you're being egotistical. But if you go to a train station and you feel like you know everybody there, or you talk to your plants, or you feel like the whole planet is one piece of rock and we should be sharing, if you have courage, if you feel like you found your life purpose, all of that points towards soul. Now let's talk about some of the characteristics of ego. Ego has a twin sister called mind. This is very strange. Every time your mind thinks and you believe that thought, you immediately get the notion of first name, last name, passport number, social security number, my job description, anything that goes with ego. So what I'm saying is, the moment you think and you believe that thought, you suddenly have a first name, last name, job description, uh, skin color, neighborhood, so forth. The moment your mind goes quiet, I'm talking about the moment your mind becomes quiet, you lose first name, last name, the sense of I, me, mine, this is my property, get off my property. The moment your mind is silent, all that goes away. So then, why do we call ego amkara, the false one who pretends to be you? Because it vanishes. You see, any part of you that vanishes and is not constant is obviously unreal. Look at fear. Fear scares the heck out of us. But if you go right up to fear, stare in the eyes, it'll vanish every single time. Everybody knows this. If you face fear and keep breathing, it will vanish. And therefore we say fear is unreal. Because anything real does not vanish. The day you're dying, you're going to remember two things. Who you love 
and who gave you love. Those are the last two things you remember. Therefore, love does not perish. Anything that perishes is unreal. Like if you have a great figure when you were 17 and a half, and now you, know, you look like you're 65. So then your body at 16 and a half is not real in the sense that it's not lasting. But the love you gave somebody in high school, they may remember that until they're 70. So figure out what is changing and what is unchanging. Love is unchanging. Your figure is changing. The amount of money in your pocketbook is changing. Like that. So let's come back to some characteristics of the ego. The ego is very insecure. Why? Because the ego lives as long as your thoughts live. In other words, if you have a busy mind, then the sense of me, I, mine, my property come into being. The moment your mind goes quiet, all that is lost. So wouldn't you be insecure if you were ego? If you were depending on thoughts for your existence, you would be very insecure because thoughts are like seven up bubbles. They pop every few seconds. So if your foundation is based on thoughts, you would be insecure. Number two, the ego feels extremely lonely. The ego is connected to the physical body. So the ego feels like, since this is Kambiza's body and Rochelle's body is over there, therefore Kambiz and Rochelle are isolated beings. Anytime you're feeling lonely, you're being egotistical. Because the ego looks at this and sees that the ears are attached to your head. So it says, I am hearing. And if I am here and Thomas is there, therefore we are two different entities. And if you step into my property, I'll cut your toes off. That's, that's where wars begin. All aggression <laughs> begins from my land, your land, because it's connected to this body. And therefore the sense of isolation. The opposite of that is soul. Soul is not connected to your body. Soul is an energy field surrounding your body. So because it's not connected to the body, it just wants to hunt. You know, it's, it's the same as the tree. It's an energy field. Now, the other thing about ego, ego is very fickle. Why? Because every 30 seconds your thoughts change. So if ego, if ego is standing on the foundation of thought, and thoughts are changing every 30 seconds, then the ego is very fickle. Meaning, one day your ego wants to be prime minister, the next day it wants to be a tennis player, the third day it wants to be a movie star. Uh, when you tell the ego, find your life purpose, the ego doesn't like that. The ego just wants to have quick gratification. Look at our modern culture right now, quick gratification. You know, show me enlightenment in 18 seconds. Let me, you know, there are apps that find you a date within a few seconds. Mm -hmm. It shows dots where all the available bachelors are via satellite. Quick gratification. Because the ego is very fickle, it cannot focus. Because every time your thoughts change, ahamkara, the ego, shifts up and down. The other thing is ego is extremely moody. Why? Because ego is linked to your mind and your mind creates moods. As your mind is doing this, your moods are doing this. And ego rides on top of moods. So it's on a roller coaster. That's why your ego is so moody. The soul is like an eagle hovering about above the crows. The crows are down here bickering. The eagle is like 200 yards above the crow. So it's not moody. It's stable. It's soaring. But the soul doesn't pay attention to the mind doing this. The soul is watching the mind. It's not the mind. So, reviewing some of the qualities. Ego, because it's attached to the body, feels separate from the rest. So, loneliness, isolation. Because ego is sitting on top of thoughts, and thoughts are going up and down, ego feels very fickle, impermanent. 
And then, because thoughts create emotions, ego is riding on that emotional roller coaster. So ego is very, very moody. And this is exactly why you cannot depend on your ego for courage, life purpose, faith. And also, ego's motto is, I'll believe it when I see it. In other words, ego is attached to your five senses. Ego is attached to your body. So it's got a nose, a tongue, and ears. It says, who's God? If you want me to believe in God, show me. And you know that the most powerful forces in the world are unseen forces. Gravity, atomic energy, charisma, intuition, love, x-ray, gamma rays. These are all unseen forces. The most powerful things, like spirituality, are unseen. You can't grab them between your finger and thumb. And ego just gets confused by that. You say, you say why don't you uh, go off into sweet solitude so your creativity can come up? The ego doesn't know what to do with that. Ego says, if I'm creative, show it to me. If I can't see it, it doesn't exist. It's very literal. This is why egotistical people can go into the middle of the Amazon and build a condo complex. Because to them, a condo can be seen. But love of nature is not something that you can hold. Like that. Anyways, we'll have other good talks together. For now, if you want to defy your ego, come to the bridge between your two nostrils and simply notice that light comes in, light goes out, take a step into my life. God bless.